Hey guys, I'm so glad you're here. Today we're learning how to add fractions with unlike denominators, which is a fifth grade standard NFA1. And we're going to be looking at some review concepts in order to help us add fractions with unlike denominators. So as we get started, I want to um, let you know that it would be helpful if you had a pencil, some scratch paper, an eraser, a whiteboard and whiteboard marker would work as well. And if you have a partner to help you during partner talk, that would be great. Maybe a parent or a sibling. If you don't have anyone to help you or talk to during that time, it's totally fine. It's great practice just speaking the language frames that we're going to be practicing uh, to yourself. So don't worry if you're on your own. Um, I also don't want you to forget that you can always pause the video and go back to parts of the video if you want to review. All right, so let's get started with this. Which pizza would you rather eat? Would you want to have two thirds of the pizza or three fourths of the pizza? Now, if you're anything like me, I would want the pizza that had more slices, right? So that we could save it and eat it for later, save it and eat it later, or, you know, just to have extras and have some leftovers, right? But in order to figure out which pizza had more, we can look at those models, which we've been practicing, um, but we could also just take a look at the fractions. We would need to change the denominator in order to compare the fractions to see which one was larger. So this skill that we've done in the past, you'll need to know this skill in order to add like unlike fractions, this will be really helpful for our lesson today, which is actually learning how to add fractions with unlike denominators. So I'll repeat the objective one more time. We are learning how to add fractions with unlike denominators. Before we get started, I want you to think about how you feel about this lesson before we start. So think about the objective. Are you, uh, for your level of understanding, are you at a level four? Do you totally understand and can teach your peers? Are you a level three? I almost have it, but I need a little more practice. A level two, I'm a little confused and need some clarification. Or a level one, are you completely lost? It's okay to be at any of these levels as we get started. And my hope is that you can increase your level of understanding by the end of the lesson. And if you're at a level four already, let's see if we can challenge and extend your thinking as we continue. And it'd be great to write questions down if you're at a level four and you continue to stay at a level four and think about some of your own extension or challenging challenge questions at the end. All right, so we're gonna review a couple of things before we get started. We know that when we add fractions that have common denominators, all we have to do is add straight across the numerators. The denominator would stay the same. So in this case, we have one third and one third, and that equals two thirds. Our, our three for the denominator stays the same for our answer, and we just have to add these two numerators together. One plus one is two. We're going to take um, we're going to be using this concept as we add unlike denominators, but I just wanted to remind you the simplicity of adding fractions with common denominators. Let's take a look back at this question here that we talked about earlier. This would be comparing fractions, which is a, a skill that we should know before we get into adding unlike fractions. So if we wanted to compare these two and figure out uh, which pizza was larger, then I would want to make sure I had a common denominator. I can do that by listing out multiples of both denominators, multiples of three and multiples of four. Three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12. I'm gonna stop there, list out multiples for four. Four times four is one, four times two is eight, four times three is 12. I'm gonna stop there because I see that those two are the same. I'm gonna change this three to a 12, and I'm gonna change this four to a 12. How did I get from three to 12? Well, I multiplied by four, and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Two times four is eight, so my new fraction is eight twelfths. How did I get from four to 12? I multiplied by three. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. So now I'm comparing 8 twelfths and 9 twelfths. Since they have the same denominator, I just focus on the numerator. 8 
is less than nine. So I can say that two thirds is less than three fourths. So if I were to choose the pizza that I wanted, I would probably pick this one because there are more slices for me to eat. So we're gonna remember that, that skill that we've practiced before and we're gonna take that over to our new lesson today. I also want to review ways that we can get multiples. We just did that in our slide previously. There's different ways that we can look to find common um, multiples. So we can make organized lists, we can use prime factorization, and we can also just list out the multiples like I did in the previous slide. Our big idea for this lesson today is to really understand that the least common denominator, the LCD, is the smallest number on the bottom of the fraction that is shared. When we are given unlike fractions, we have different denominators. So we have to find the LCD or the least common denominator to make like fractions. And here's the sample again from the previous slide. We can change 2 thirds and 3 fourths to 8 twelfths and 9 twelfths, which will make adding easier. I also want to remind you about your success criteria. Success criteria helps us understand what we already know that will help us be successful in this new lesson that we're learning. So we can already find equivalent fractions or like fractions. We can use math facts to find the least common denominator and we can add fractions with like denominators. So these skills that we've already learned will be really helpful in um, our success as we learn this new skill. So let's get started. I have one third plus one fourth. And remember when I'm modeling, just watch and um, see how I'm going through the steps and you'll have an opportunity to practice in just a few minutes. So I'm first gonna list out my multiples for three. So three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12, and I'll do three times five is 15. I'll go through and list my multiples for four. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, and right there I can see that they have 12 in common. So I can change, I'm going to write out my fractions vertically because that makes it easier for me. I'm going to change 1 third to a denominator of 12 and 1 fourth to have a denominator of 12. How did I get from 3 to 12? Well, I can come back and count over here. I'm just going to change this color. And I can say oh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So 1 times 4 is 4. If I look down here, how did I get from 4 to 12? Well, I can count back. 1, 2, 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. And now I can add 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths by just adding the numerators. 4 plus 3 is 7, and I keep the same denominator. I look at my numerator and denominator, and I can decide that I don't need to simplify anymore because the fraction's already simplified. And now I have 7 twelfths. I would also like to show you before I go into steps, there's one more way we can find um, a common denominator. I can multiply these two denominators together, the 3 and the 4, and get 12. And I can use that to make my denominator. See how it's the same? Now I would like to warn you that if you do this and you multiply instead of writing out a list, that you will probably have to simplify in the end. It doesn't always work out that you find the least common denominator that way, but I wanted to give that to you as an option. And I'll show you um, that as an example in our next model. But our steps that we're looking at today is we're going to find the least common denominator, we're going to multiply to find our equivalent fractions, add the like fractions, and make sure to simplify if we need to. Let me show you one more example. So I have 5 and 10. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. And I'm actually going to stop right there because I already have 10 and 10 in common. And this one is pretty exciting because I only have to change one denominator. I just have to change this 5 to a 10. How did we get from 5 to 10? Well, I multiplied 2 times. 5 times 2 is 10. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 1 times 2 is 2. 
I still have seven tenths. I didn't need to change that one. Now I can add the numerators straight across. Two plus seven is nine, and I keep the same denominator. Now, if I multiplied five times 10, like that little trick I showed you before, I would have gotten 50 as a denominator, which would have been fine, but I would have had to simplify a lot more in the end to get the right answer. So keep that in mind um, if you decide to use that strategy. All right, let's try some together. If you'd like to pause and just go through it on your own and see how you do, you can definitely do that. If you want to stick with me, then you can do that as well. All right. So let's write out multiples for these numbers. So 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. Let's write out for 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is 10. I can stop right there and see that these two would be the first number they have in common. It's the least number. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write out my fractions vertically. It makes it easier for me to see it that way. I'm going to change both of these to 10. And um, I, I asked myself, how did I get from 5 to 10? Well, I multiplied by 2. 1, 2. 5 times 2 is 10. So whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 2 times 2 is 4. I come down here and I ask myself the same question. How did I get from 2 to 10? 2 times 5 is 10. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 1 times 5 is 5. Now I can keep the same denominator and I add the numerator straight across. 4 plus 5 is 9. I'd also like to show you, I'm just going to change the color here, that if I had multiplied 5 times 2 to get that common denominator, I would get 10 and it's the same one here. Okay, but remember it doesn't always work out that way. If we did it this way and we got a different number, then we would most likely have to simplify. So I followed my same steps. I don't need to simplify this fraction. And now let's try the next one. Actually, before we try the next one, I would like to ask you a question. So please choose one of the sentence frames and, and respond either, either yourself or if you have someone next to you, like a sibling or a parent, you can turn and talk to each other. So use one of the sentence frames. I found the answer by blank. The least common denominator was blank. I multiplied by blank to create equivalent fractions. So go ahead and pause and take a moment to fill in one of those sentences. All right, we're going to go ahead and try this one, 3 fourths plus 1 eighth. I'm going to keep that turn and talk up so that we remember to use it when we're done with this example. And I'm going to go ahead and write out my multiples. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. I can actually stop right there because I have those in common. So I'm going to, I'm going to write it up here, I think. 3 fourths and 1 eighth. I can keep my 1 eighth the same because I'm going to be changing this 4 to an 8. How did I get from 4 to 8? I multiplied by 2. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 3 times 2 is 6. And now I can add 6 plus 1 is 7 and I keep my same denominator 8. So I would say I found the answer by listing out the multiples of 4 and 8 and finding the least common denominator. For the second sentence, I would say the least common denominator was 8. And for the last sentence, I would say I multiplied by 2 to create equivalent fractions, or I multiplied 4 times 2 to create an equivalent fraction. Now here's a good example of if we multiplied these two to find a common denominator, we would get 32. It would still work, but we'd have to do some work simplifying in the end. So I'm actually going to erase this and show you what that would look like if we decided to do that. So if I decided to change 3 fourths and change that to 32 and 1 eighth and change that to 32, then I would say 4 times 8 is 32. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 3 times 8 is 24. 8 times 4 is 32. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So 1 times 4 
is 4, and then I would have to add 24 plus 4, which is 28. Keep the same denominator, 32, and now I have to simplify. 28 can go into 4 7 times, 32 can go into 4 8 times. So I get the same answer, but just have some extra simplification to do at the end. All right, let's try one more. 2 twelfths plus 3 fourths. If you'd like to pause and just try it on your own, you can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead, um, because I know that 12 is a multiple of 4, I'm just going to start with 4. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12. And right there, I have found my least common denominator. I can keep 2 twelfths the same. If I'm going to change 3 fourths, I'm going to make that a 12. 4 times 3 is 12. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. And now we can add straight across. My denominator is 12. And I'm going to add 2 plus 9, which is 11. And that cannot be simplified. So my answer is 11 twelfths. Go ahead and pause and turn and talk, choosing one of the sentence frames. Okay. Now we'll continue. Our, what was our learning objective today? So we're learning how to add unlike fractions, and we can also say that we're learning how to add fractions um, with an uncommon denominator. That's what we're trying to figure out today with unlike denominators. Uh, right now, let's take a self-assessment. How do you feel now about this learning objective? Did you increase in your level of understanding? Do you feel like you need more challenge? Do you feel like you need more help? Um, and rate that for yourself. I would like to ask you to look at this question before we close our lesson. Um, Wyatt tried to add unlike fractions by finding the least common denominator. Find Wyatt's error and what should his answer be? So go ahead and pause and take a moment to figure this out. What did Wyatt do wrong? So if I want to figure this out, I'm going to write these out over here. I'm going to find a common denominator. 1 6 is going to stay the same. I can actually change this 3 to a 6 also by multiplying by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. So I'll have 1 6 plus 4 6, which should give me 5 6. So it looks like what Wyatt did wrong is he added the denominators. He did 6 plus 6 is 12. I'm not really sure how he got this 11 here, but he should have gotten 5. So if you were to explain your thinking, you would want to make sure that you explained that he added the denominators, which he's not supposed to do. The denominator should stay the same. In our final question, is all of the sums of the fractions should be the same. I want you to find the fraction set that does not belong by solving each equation. So go ahead and pause and try to solve. And when you're ready, come back and see the answer. I'm gonna go ahead and go through here. This one's easy to solve. I'm gonna look right off the bat. They already have common denominators. So this answer is seven six. This one here, I can change this denominator to a six to make it common. 3 times 2 is 6. We multiply by 2 here. So I will have 2, 6. 5, 6 plus 2, 6 is also 7, 6. So it looks like these two match so far. This one here, I'm going to do what's in the parentheses first. 1, 6 plus 1, 6 is 2, 6. And again, I have common denominators, 5, 6 and 2, 6. And when I add those together, I get 7, 6. So that matches also. If I want to change this one to have a common denominator, I can multiply 2 times 3 and get 6. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. But if I add 5, 6 plus 6, 6, I get 8, 6. So this one does not be long because it has a different numerator when we add it. All right, thank you so much for sticking along and watching. I really appreciate you being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more direct instruction videos on different concepts. Thank you again.